In this video, we're going to be going over the CyberPower CP1500 PFC LCD. That's a pure sine wave PFC UPS unit. Not only are we going to be going over all the settings and functions that this UPS unit has to offer, I'm gonna give you two pros and two cons that you, this unit has with the competition in this market space. If we were to take a look at the front interface display of the CyberPower UPS unit, you'll see a power button here. You'll see a display button that is also an arrow down along with a mute button that has an arrow pointing up. And lastly, an enter button that is also labeled setup. The front display, if we hit the display button, we'll show you exactly that, the display which can actually be pulled out at an angle. Beware, do not use that as a handle. That is clearly stated in the manual. Now, if we were to use these buttons, these down arrow and up arrow buttons, this can actually move you through the menu. But to take a look at the first part of this display, you'll see the battery capacity on the top. You'll see online, meaning that the UPS unit is plugged into grid power, and you'll see savings. Savings means that um, it's just passing power through the device. And then below that, you'll see the current load, which right now is very low, and then you'll see output of 117 volts, meaning 117 volts is being outputted from this unit. So if we hit the down display arrow, that'll bring you over to Hertz, which means this is a pure sine wave, a pure PFC sine wave of 60 Hertz. Right now there is an output of 90 watts going to one of the appliances plugged into it, along with the VA output, output percentage in watts, so we're at 9% of the total wattage output, which is 1,000 watts. You also see here a percentage of the VA output, which is 8%. Right here, you'll see the capacity in digital form, which is 100%, because right now it's passing power through the UPS unit. And right here, you'll see an approximate runtime if the grid power were to go down, and this would have to run off of battery, it would be roughly about 72 minutes of runtime before the battery is depleted based on a 90 watt load. Right here, you'll see that there were two events, meaning that the grid power went down, whether it be for a long time or for a split second, causing the UPS to switch over from grid power to battery power. And lastly, we have the input, meaning power going into this device, into this UPS unit is 117 volts from the grid. Below the display, you will see two USB ports. One is USB type A, and the other one is USB type C. So right here is the cable to connect from the UPS unit to the computer. You know what this looks like? This actually looks like one of those printer cables where you connect via USB. And what this allows you to do is connect to the interface on a computer from which the software is installed so, so that you can get a better overview and control of the CyberPower UPS unit. Okay, so I finished plugging in that USB cable that I showed you earlier. And right now we're at the cyberpowersystems.com forward slash products forward slash software. And if we scroll down, we want to go down to Power Panel Personal. That's because that is the type of software that is supposed to work with the USB cable connection. And because I have a Windows-based Windows, Windows -based operating system, I'm going to start with this download. And the install is moving forward. And this looks like the dashboard here. And it just updated. That's pretty cool. So yeah, it's showing that we have AC utility because we're plugged into the wall. Battery capacity as, is at 100%. Estimated runtime based on the load is going to be approximately 42 minutes. If we move over to summary, this is a recently installed program with a, unboxed, with a newly unboxed UPS unit. So a lot of this stuff is saying never and none. It's giving you a readout of uh, any events that happened. Event logs. So you can actually see logging information 
on what is going on with the UPS unit and the computer. If we tab over here, we'll see energy reporting, and you can select the time frame, and it'll give you average energy consumption, cumulative energy consumption, cumulative cost, and CO2. Moving over further to the right, or actually, energy settings, right here is where you can define the cost per kilowatt hour and CO2 emitted per kilowatt hour. Moving further to the right, we have our settings. Figure UPS, you can run it on a schedule. Decide what time the computer should shut down and restart. That's pretty cool. Controls the UPS alarm and software sounds. Runtime controls the length of time your computer runs on battery. Voltage controls the tolerance of your UPS to voltage fluctuations. Let's take a look at this. Okay, that's 103, which is default. And then the lowest of the high, because I want the tightest possible range. So if there is fluctuation, the automatic voltage regulation will kick on. So it's at 135. You have your self-test, where it'll test the unit. You can initiate it yourself. Advanced input voltage sensitivity. Oh, that is pretty cool. If we put it on high, you can select adequate sensitivity according to the connected equipment and power quality. Control power quality according to high sensitivity. You can specify the shutdown type. You can either have it go into shutdown or hibernation. Power panel cloud solutions if you wanted to connect this unit to the cloud to be able to control the UPS unit and devices connect, connected to it anywhere. The first pro and con has to both do with automatic voltage regulation. The pro is going to be the range is a little bit tighter than the competition in the same price point, meaning that the lowest part of the range is a little bit higher and the highest part of the range is a little bit lower, meaning if there's, it's more sensitive to the voltage fluctuation. So depending on how the voltage dips or exceeds the highest threshold, it'll kick on more often to make sure that that voltage is at 120 volts nominal or as close to it as possible. The con with the automatic voltage regulation is going to be whenever it kicks on, there is an audible sound, whether it be like a fan or some sort of electronic buzzing sound coming from the unit. So you can hear it. It's not really the end of the world to me. It doesn't bother me. The next pro is going to be the competition only has 900 watts that it's rated for, whereas with this unit, it can go up to 1,000 watts. So if you have a higher end gaming system or if you have a power supply for a server or computer that requires more wattage, then that extra 100 watts might make all the difference. The last con is going to be that this unit does not have a coaxial surge protection, whereas the competition in the same price point actually does have coax, coax surge protection. So what does that mean? If you are in a room where only ethernet comes through and plugs into your devices, then you don't really need coax surge protection anyways. But if your computer is right next to your cable modem or, um, a cable jack where you have to make sure that any surge that would come through that coax is protected, then you might want to go with a different option.